Hello everyone, my name is Maria Jose Jimenez, and today I will be presenting my fourth Physics 2211 lab, which revolves around the motion of a spring mass. The purpose of this lab is to study the motion of mass as it oscillates through a spring. These are the steps that we will be taking today. First, we will be extracting the data from a video of a mass oscillating on a spring while swinging in orbit in motion. Then we'll compare this model to a computational model constructed on the GlowScript software in order to understand and predict motion and the energy changes that occur because of this. The principles involved include a few formulas, such as Newton's second law, and we know that change in momentum over time is the net force. Change in momentum can also be stated as mass times change in velocity all over change in time. And the force net in this case is the force of gravity plus the force of the spring, which would again be simplified into Ks plus mg. Another concept that we will be using in this lab is the energy principle, which states that energy should be conserved, meaning energy can either be created nor destroyed. We must also consider what our system is in this case. We will say that the system will be the mass of the spring and earth, so all of our interactions occur within the system. Thereby, there will be no work involved since there are no surroundings. Then the total change in energy should be zero. The kinetic energy will be used to describe the object's energy during motion. The potential energies will used will be the spring potential energy, which will be non-constant depending on where the mass is and how far the spring is stretched. The gravitational potential energy, which will show how gravity will impact the mass. And we will use the tracker software to help us extract the data from the video so we can measure the motion of the mass. Its initial position and velocity were previously given to us from a pre-lecture video and can be determined from the graph and the oscillation time, which was, um, sorry, determined by the graph, which is approximately 1.5 seconds. Here we can see my video in tracker. And here we can see the mass oscillating and as tracker updates its position and thereby retrieves its velocity. Physics. Utilizing our previous formulas for the forces, we can use information from tracker to calculate the forces acting on the system by using the respective formulas for spring force. We need to calculate the spring constant using the formula for oscillation and time, and then the relaxed length of the spring by rearranging the equation at equator value. Now we can take this information and plug it into our code on GlowScript. The initial position, ball mass, and initial velocity are the same ones used in the tracker software, and delta t is taken to be relatively small for a small to have more accurate inter inter iterations. We plug in the relaxed length and the spring constant previously calculated, as well as the formulas for stretched update, kinetic, gravitational potential, and speed potential energies. And then we add all of our energies up to find the total energy net code. As we begin iterating, the total time is approximately 9.5 seconds. The initial energies will then need to be updated inside the loop. The forces are calculated using Newton's second law and position update formula. The spring is updated using the same steps. And all of this leads us for our code to be ready and to be run and so we could extract our data. This is a side-to-side -side comparison between the predicted and computational model. The um, color blue represents the gravitation and potential energy by color red the spring potential energy green and the total change in energy is orange. Since the total change in energy is at zero, then it correctly depicts the energy in the systems. The second and third graph shows a comparison of the predicted model in blue versus the experimental model in one in X and Y components. And there are some discrepancies over time, which could be due to a neglected drag force. And what does this all mean? We could further ask ourselves if the energy principle is satisfied. So since the energy principle states that the energy of a system is equal to the energy of the surroundings, and in this case, since we mentioned before, there are no surroundings, so there should be no change in energy, the energy principle is satisfied. 
And if we compare the time oscillation between X and Y components, we can see that from Trekker that they're almost the same. They're almost the same, which concludes that yes, the energy principle